Welcome to Electron Online, and now let's take a closer look at the radiation curve coming from different objects, mainly different types of stars, and then also comparing to the radiation curve of a person. Now, a star, let's say, at 15,000 degrees Kelvin on the surface, which is almost three times as hot as the sun, has a much higher radiation curve, meaning the intensity of the radiation coming from that star is much higher, almost 100 times as high as it is for the sun. It's not relative here, you can't really tell by the way I drew the curve, but if I were to draw it in relative size, I would have to draw this curve almost 100 times higher than this curve. So just to get the feel, this is much higher intensity at 15,000 Kelvin versus 5,800 Kelvin. Also notice that the highest peak for the radiation is shifted towards the left, towards the UV radiation. You'll have UV in this range, you have visible light over here, and you have infrared radiation on that side of the curve. Notice the peak radiation occurs at 193 nanometers, which is well into the UV band. So the vast majority of the radiation coming from that star at 15,000 Kelvin is UV radiation. So very hot stars like that have a very strong radiation curve in the UV, meaning they blast lots of UV into their surroundings. We probably could not live near a star that is that hot simply because too much UV, too much ultraviolet radiation would be coming from that star. It would be very difficult for life to exist on a planet near a star like that. Our sun at 5,800 degrees Kelvin has a nice medium. It has a little bit of UV coming from the star, but mainly visible light and the average visible light is around 500 nanometers, making the sun a yellow star. Notice that the intensity is much lower than this one, and of course about 100 times lower. Now let's say we have a star that has a temperature of 4,000 Kelvin on its surface. Yes, it does put out maybe a very small amount of UV, lots of visible light, but notice that the average uh, wavelength is at 725 nanometers, which actually puts that in the infrared the near-infrared range, and so a, a large percentage of a star that has a temperature of 4,000 Kelvin puts out a large percentage of the radiation is actually infrared radiation. And then if we look at a 3,000 Kelvin star, which is among the smaller of the stars that you'll find out there in space, the surface temperature of 3,000 Kelvin, notice that the average radiation is almost at 1,000 nanometers well into the infrared radiation, so it doesn't put nearly out as much visible light as a typical star does. Again, it would not be a good place to live probably near a star that has a temperature of 3,000 Kelvin because much of its radiation is in the infrared, not so much in the visible light, and so it wouldn't give off as much heat unless you live pretty close to one of those stars. And as a comparison, notice a human being at a 310 degrees Kelvin typically for body temperature, it has a curve far to the right with a wavelength that, uh, that is centered much farther into the infrared radiation band. So that gives you kind of a feel for what we call the radiation curve. Again, all objects, stars, objects like our bodies, have a range of radiation that comes from the object because of the variation in the kinetic energy of each individual molecule compared to the others. There's of course a range of kinetic energies that peaks at a certain uh, energy and therefore the radiation peaks at a certain wavelength, but there's ranges that goes to higher wavelengths and lower wavelengths in, uh, in both directions of the curve. So there you go, that's what we call the radiation curve of objects, including that of stars.